Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. Yes. We're, we're going to talk about the strikes. And we're going to talk about how Bob Iger is in the crosshairs now. Remember when everyone thought he was going to be the savior of Disney? Mm -hmm. The savior Not of everyone, Hollywood? but yes. Yeah, people who knew the inside scoop were like, oh God, here we go again. But uh, no, the media was praising this guy. They're oh, like, yes. Oh, finally. Bob Iger is back to save us, and now he's the uh, the bad guy. He's the bad guy because he's, uh, I guess, the the most uh, vociferous voice against the uh, the terms of the agreement and the strike, and they're taking everything out on Bob. Fran Drescher called him out. Now they've got another article calling him out. Well, you know, he does wear designer clothes, and that's just a cardinal sin. That is a cardinal sin. It is. Actually, some of the clothes he wears are, are a cardinal sin, but... Uh, I just keep finding that vastly entertaining that the actors who wear designer clothes to the, all the different award shows and everything else on their own, they're always like on Instagram, their designer clothes are like, but oh my God, Bob Iger in his designer clothes. <laughs> yeah, they're, and they're talking about, you know, what he, he makes and, and look, I'm going to be honest, like I'm not, I'm not trying to defend Bob Iger here, right? Because we have been very, very critical of Bob Iger, but as far as CEOs go, as far as the size of Disney goes, his compensation isn't isn't ridiculous. Right, and I mean, like, really I'm like the actors are doing one gig or whatever. You know, he's running multiple companies, multiple branches of Disney. Uh, I mean, do I think CEOs are paid? Yes, but he works, you know, 365 days a year, pretty much on call. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like Scarlett Johansson's getting that much for one movie, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk about how the strike is going. Um, the WGA says it got a lecture from Iger. Zaslav and company at the Tuesday night meeting to discuss the strike. Uh, we've got um, this this nugget here that supposedly Amp Tip has hired a crisis PR firm. I don't think that's true. Actually, it's looking worse. I think for the WGA and SAG after because they leak the uh, the salaries that these yeah, people are already when, getting. Yeah, and when you see what they're getting, it's I, you know they, I don't know why they're complaining. And the whole thing is it's hinging on that stupid writers' room mandate because. Basically, we're going to pay you a bunch of money, but we only you need like at least two people. Right, right. Uh, so we'll talk about all this. This is going to be sort of a, ra a wrap up of current events with the strike with Disney and uh, some people that are collateral damage, unfortunately. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woo um, so what started this was these uh, tweets from Discussing Film, and uh, they're really... I don't know. They're they're definitely picking a side here because you look at the articles they link to, and a lot of times they're not explicitly naming Bob Iger as the bad guy, but a lot of people are definitely naming him. So they're talking about what the writers are asking for. And again, I, I just have a really hard time believing that so many of these pop culture journalists, so many of them that only make maybe two or three thousand dollars a month, if they're lucky, are completely okay with the idea that there are writers out there currently even mid-range writers making almost ten thousand dollars a week for just for a short run right. job. You know? So you work two months on the show, you're making more money than most people make in a year. Even if you're living in LA, that's that's pretty good money. Right, right. And some people are working on multiple shows, you yeah. know. But you know, because they're, they're friends with these people, or they're hoping that they're going to get a cookie. That's exactly what this is. So I think what's going on here, and we're seeing a lot of these outlets, uh, you know, really go hard at defending the WGA and defending SAG after. Cause I think they're aspiring screenwriters. They are aspiring screenwriters. Yes. A lot of people working as journalists, working as comic book writers, whatever they think they're going to get a cookie. They think they're going to be invited to the party and they're going to get their 11,000 a week. Right. Someday. Yeah. The thing is, is after the, the uh, dust settles with this strike, I can guarantee you Hollywood is going to look very, very different. I think we're going to have more people working outside of the, uh, the system, right? We're going to have more people to go on FICOR or whatever. They're not going to be unionized or these studios will give unionized workers mostly what they want. And then they will go find a lot more non-union. I think they're just going to use as an excuse to cancel a bunch of stuff. So they only yep. have to hire like, a, you know, okay, fine. We have to hire five of you, but we're only doing two shows now instead of 10. Yep. You know, so the WGA says it got a lecture, a lecture from Bob Iger, David Zaslav, the Tuesday night meeting, right? Good, because <laughs> they're getting their hand in whatever they want, except for the one thing. Yep. After receiving an invite to sit down Tuesday evening with Bob Iger, 
uh, Donna Langley from Universal, Ted Sarandos from Netflix, who already said that they had tons of Korean stuff mm-hmm. on, on deck, and uh, David Zaslav. Uh, we were met with a lecture about how good their single and only counteroffer was. And that was when we went over and it was pretty good other than the writer's room mandates, you know, the, the uh, minimum number of writers, the deal was pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. At least from my perspective, I, if I were a writer that I, I was uh, secure in my ability to maintain a job, I'd be like, well, why? that's key right there. Right. Why the hell are you not taking that deal? Because that's way more than we're making now. That's that's uh, guaranteeing those of us who are good more time on a project. We they get gave them residuals. more guarantees. Like they were guaranteed a minimum of so much for a project. So they're giving them guarantees to make sure that they have somewhat, you know, they're, you get paid. If you're in a shorter project, you get paid more. Yeah. So you, you, have, if you, so you have more money going out of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... I I don't know what else to say. I mean, I thought, you know, if anybody else, this is a pretty good deal. There are so many people in this world who work way harder and they, you know, work in three or four jobs trying to keep the roof over their heads and they don't get paid anywhere near that amount of money. No. And they're like, well, that's great, but you need to hire a bunch of us that amount of money. And I'm I'm quite, I think I speak for most of America when I say, fuck you. Yeah. This isn't working the way that they thought. I mean, maybe in Hollywood, you know, being this petulant works, uh, you know, maybe people are like, oh, my God, you're only making $14,000 a week. That's like poverty wages. And they're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They know it's a pretty good deal, right? Amp tip. And this is why WGA said they're like, well, we're not going to release details because I think they're going to have a lot of their members pissed off. Yeah, because they're being they like, take well, it. you know, because they're they're demanding because they, 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 they stupid mandates. And there's a lot of people who know they're going to have work. Yeah. And they're like, okay, why well, are you know that I've got like five or six shows lined up and you're stalling me out Yes. for people that just showed up and aren't good and probably cause a lot of the, the issues to begin with. Yes. Yeah. Uh, get rid of the people that don't perform, right? Um, they said this wasn't a meeting to make a deal. This was a meeting to get us to cave, which is why not 20 minutes after we left, Amp Tip released its summary of their proposals. This was the company's plan from the beginning, not to bargain, but to jam us. It's their only strategy to bet that we will turn on each but other. Wait, 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 wait. How is this not bargaining? How is it not bargaining? Because because it basically sounds like they're giving you everything you like fucking 85%. want. Like 85%. Thing, and that's your stupid mandates, which we have said since day one, was ridiculous, overreaching, and stupid. If you don't have enough work for 20 people in a writer's room, there shouldn't be fucking 20 people in a damn writer's room. I'm sorry. That's not how math works. That's not how economics work. And I don't care how much money the studio makes. You're like, we are, we're owed more. They're giving you more for the ones they need to hire. Your yeah. mandates are stupid. And well, I'm sorry, you're hurting a lot of other people, too. Because this one mandate, because some of our people that we brought on and we over, you know, overreached with how many shows we did, and we hired everybody and their brother, now they want to stay employed. What? Yeah, exactly. That's what this is ultimately about. This is ultimately about keeping underperformers hired um, and also probably long-term controlling the content. Because if you have a bunch of activists- Yeah, exactly what it is. They don't belong there, right? They were, uh, a lot of them, pity hires, diversity hires, nepotism no, hires- no, of white women who are out there like no 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 i'm just saying activists. what happens what happens is you know some of these people get into a company and we've seen this time and time again with the entertainment industry in fact we, ju- we just talked about it uh on the drez podcast about kind of what happened with blizzard and people will hire people like themselves so you get a couple people into the company that have a certain mindset oh they'll hire their friends and yeah. they're going to hire their friends and then their friends are going to hire friends the next thing you know they're going to push out a lot of the people that have been there or find a reason to make the people that are actually performing out to be some kind of a problematic monster just to get them out of the way because they're competition. So what's going on here is we have a bunch of termites in the building. They don't want to leave. They're not going to leave willingly. So, you know, you can't really call pest control in. So the only thing you can do is kind of starve them, right? So that's what they're trying to do. Like, we'll take we'll take the people that are good, that are actually performing, that are going to make us money. Because that's the thing. When you work for a company... The company isn't hiring you because they're good people and they just want to give you a job. 
The studios made their own problem here in the fact that they kept trying to crank out, if we're putting quantity over quality, they were trying to crank out so much crap, they kept hiring everybody they could hire because they yes. needed so many people, to, you know, for the writers or whatever. And then, you know, when they inevitably crashed because the shows they were picking were dog shit and the ones that are based on IP were dog shit because they ruined it and people were turning against these, these you know, agenda-driven type shows. Um then they have all these people that now want to keep being fed, keep being fed, keep getting paid, and they brought them in themselves. But the reality of the situation is, and I said this before, if you have like two restaurants and one of the restaurants shuts down, where you can take a few people from that restaurant to your other restaurant, you obviously are going to have to lay people off or get rid of them yeah. because you cannot keep everyone. Yeah, that that's true. They don't understand this, but that that's what this is about because they were given, and we went over this before. Um, in uh, Amp Tips uh, disclosure, they oh, were they're mad studios and streamers. Yeah, they were given like eighty five percent of what they were asking for. As the studios and streamers disclosed on Tuesday, they offered the WGA increased data par- uh, transparency, which will be comprised of viewership data in the form of quarterly confidential right. reports. They're getting everything they asked for except for one thing. Yeah, total views per hour. Right. Just like YouTube. Right. Other aspects of that proposal. And this is coming from Yahoo. So it sounds like they're kind of like right down the middle here. They're like other aspects of the proposal include a compounded 13 percent compensation increase over a three year contract, including residual increases, protections, financial and otherwise against AI, a guaranteed minimum employment rate in development rooms and new terms and conditions for advertising based on streaming. They gave them pretty much everything they wanted, except for we think there should be like, yo. Three times more people than the necessary in the writer's room. This is the writer's fault at this point. Like you're given the only thing that they're not buckling on is the number of people that you want to have in the writer's room. And I'm sorry, if you've got a competent showrunner, a lot of competent showrunners, they don't want to be stuck with a bunch of staffers anyway. Mm -hmm. And it sounds to me like they're getting stuck with a minimum number of people and they're just stepping over them. They're not even using their stuff Mm -mm. because they're like, it doesn't fit with the rest of the show, but I'm stuck with these people. So go get me some coffee or something. And then it'll come out like that problematic white male showrunner made me get coffee. Right. Didn't listen to my ideas. I just wanted to change everything about the show. Yeah. Right. You know, Um, it's, it's just, they gave them pretty much everything they wanted. They gave them everything they wanted, everything they wanted pretty much. And, uh, but I think they knew, I think, I think this was absolutely planned. I think they're like, we're going to show the public how ridiculous you people actually are. Mm-hmm. You're getting offered 11 to $14,000 per week, guaranteed two months of work. Yeah. Minimum. There was like minimum. 10 weeks and there was like bigger, longer ones. You are making, you are making a uh, white collar professional, uh, doctor, lawyer, maybe in the Midwest money for two months worth of work. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's and that's. You can go on to another. You can go on another show. You can go like, on to you, another you show. Do that, and then if you, you know, go do other projects. Yeah. So you could do that's for, for you could one show could get carry you through the whole year. Even in L.A. Do, and you could do multiples of those. Even in L.A. I know L.A. is expensive. Feel bad for you because oh my god, guys. Just so you know, that isn't the full amount we have to pay union dues and pay taxes in that amount taxes. so we get a little bit less than that and it, you don't understand that you regular people out there it's so unfair you're plebs you don't yeah, understand I'm like, you can mean like everybody else who has a fucking union or has to pay taxes you know like everyone so apparently amp tip is they're they're spinning it as they're hiring a crisis pr firm um and that might have been their recommendation to just release the salaries because I think they're it like, was. they probably, yeah. Cause they're probably like, honestly, if they hired me as a PR, I would have told them to do the same thing. Yeah. I would have been being like ridiculous at this point. Yeah. Um, so the person they hired is the one who countered the pizza gate thing. Uh, that's interesting. But they said that the Levinson group, this is uh what Molly, Molly Levinson, uh, augments its existing pair of retained media consultants. They spent their career in Hollywood. Um, they said AmpTip has a history of reaching beyond the entertainment industry to the political world for assistance in the oh boy, in the midst of a strike emergency. But yeah, they they said that they're they're hiring basically a political PR team. But I think this is at this point this is kind of becoming a political issue because you're basically talking about like communists that think they should be just on salary forever because they just should be given the job because they're, they're there. Yeah. And everybody has to work and every, it's like, fine. Then you can live like, you can live like communists and you can all have a job, but you're all going to get nothing. 
And, now, and then people You're are like, well, if they week. do this, they limit the room, then that means that new people aren't going to get a turn. New people are already not going to get a turn because they're, if they're mandating, even if they are mandating 10 people in the writer's room, there are so many people they hired during the, the boom in making content that there are people waiting in lines even with 10 people in a writer's room, you aren't going to get in anytime soon unless you're really good and they come to you anyway. So it doesn't matter if they limit the amount of people. New people aren't going to get in either way. And that includes you, media, who are actually what want to be Hollywood screenwriters. And, and a lot of these a lot of these people, the people that are actually making it, the people that are actually showrunners, a lot of them didn't go through the, the proper steps to get there, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, well, I worked my way up. Some of them did, but others just like they had a damn good idea or they came from someplace else or they, they did something were, were else. They worked someplace else and knew somebody. Right. And more often than not, it's, it's nepotism. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. But I mean, this is like the, the fact that they're trying to spin it like amp tip or, or the ones that are being ridiculous. I'm like, look, they make a ridiculous amount of money. I get it. I think the residuals thing I think was ridiculous. I think AI needed to be reined in a little bit, but that being said, you're not making a good case for them to spare you when they're like, well, these actors and writers are all pain in the ass and they can all be replaced with computers. And then we can just keep all the money. But they even offered protections against that. Yes. I didn't think they would do that. I honestly, that one, I didn't think they would do residuals. I thought they would do maybe a, a nominal raise. I thought they would do, I did not expect them to give them protection against AI on top of it, on top of a raise. And, with and, his... and they would, they were going to be transparent with the numbers. Yeah. Cause you know, they're really protective of that shit and they're going to open, they're going to give you them copies of that too, to prove that they're doing it fairly. And then they still were mad about it because they didn't get the minimum writers. Yeah. So don't, don't go out there and, and be like, and trying to fool the public into being like, we just want a living wage. Cause the public, the general public what even in LA they would kill to be making well, ten to fourteen thousand right dollars now. A week. Like they showed them in the, the list. Like here's what you're making now. Here's what it'll be raised to. Yeah. And even what they're making now was really high. Yes. And I don't think people realize. I don't think That's people probably. realized that they were making as much money as they were. I think they were thinking, well, these guys are just getting barely a month. You know, they're probably getting like twenty or thirty dollars an hour in LA. That's like, oh, bitch, you have no idea. Yeah, they're probably getting a couple thousand a week, maybe if they're lucky, or a thousand a week, maybe. And you know, poor no, them. No, but it's no, like no, times no, ten. No. Um. No. Yeah, and so and then because of this, the strikes going on. Um, we have this one story at camp yesterday. I guess the one I ought to see. Um, the office had to close because a below the line worker made apparently strike related threats about stuff. They don't say what was, I think threatened, but they closed down the office because they said he's mad. He's out of work. He's homeless. He's distraught. Okay. I don't know if it's a cry for help or not knowing how to control anger because what people are forgetting when the writers and the actors who are well-paid, you know, are striking. It's now because of that, all the people that are below the line, all the people that are like, you know, the ones that work behind the scenes, all the businesses that are, you know, live based on the movies being produced, like, you know, costume prop shops or, you know, catering and things like that, assistance, all that. They're not being used. No. So they're not getting paid anything. So there, there is collateral damage beyond, you know, the longer this thing drags out. But I think it's very unfair to solely blame the studios on this because they've walked away from a pretty damn good deal. And they mm-hmm. said, that's our own, only counter offer. They basically got everything they wanted except that, that writer's room guarantee. And even then they still guaranteed some. Yeah. Some, but it yeah. wasn't enough. Yeah. It was like the showrunner could hand pick, like they had to pick two, two at minimum and they could go more if they wanted to, but, but they yeah, want at like, least two, two they guaranteed. Want like 12 or 20. Right. That's what's it. They want like 20 people in the writer's room. And so now because of it, I mean, this is bad. Don't ever make threats. I mean, that's no. stupid. Don't do that. But they said he's mad. He's out of work and he's homeless now. So dudes like, you know, just like go back to work so I can get back to work. People are probably losing their, we know people are losing their homes, they're losing their families, they're losing different things over the whole situation. It's very, very stressful. Um, so this, this, this is what makes me mad about this, right? Because again, it's not just you, it's not just the actors, it's not just the writers. But the longer this drags on, I mean, for all this talk of like, oh, the little guy, we're out here. You've got Adam Conover, who I, I lost a hell of a lot of respect for during this whole thing. Because oh, like, I already thought he was full of shit. I thought I'm like, you're completely, completely full of shit, Adam. But the, you've got but him out. He does out. ruin everything. He does ruin. He ruined everything. Yeah, actually, if they had somebody else being the face of it, it might have gone better, right? It, immediately, it was like, God, you're just annoying. You're really annoying. But 
I'm looking at this like all these people, these are the people that you're pretending you are. You're pretending that you're these like grunts that, you know what I'm saying? Like, but the, the grips, this guy's a grip. They're not, they're not striking. You know, you guys put them out of work because you're striking because the $10,000 a week you're getting isn't enough. Mm -hmm. You know, and, but this guy probably was only making, he probably wasn't even making that in a couple of months. And then the actors are striking too, but they're saying it's for the lower paying actors because the, the, the A-listers. Well, that, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and even, they're that, fine. even that was, was really hypocritical because they're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to go on strike for the little guys, which is true. I mean, the little guys don't get that much, no. you know, but they were out there filming productions that were going to go yeah, special permissions to go out special and deals. Anyway. And, yeah. And a lot of the people that were the, the A-listers, you know, they've got residuals coming in. They've, they've got millions in the bank. They're fine. You know, so it's kind of, so this, these are the people that are actually being hurt right here. You know, the longer this thing drags out and they're talking, it could go into early next year. I mean, the fact that they moved Dune tells me that they're thinking it's it's going to go into next year. Well, I think that they, I mean, and ultimately the studios too, it is true that they are planning this, which is, I think, honestly, I think they are. I think they were. Then they're responsible for a lot of people being homeless and I hope yeah. they're very happy with themselves. Yeah. You know, but in this case, it sounds like, you know, Iger made the comment during the investor call that he was, he was, you know, he was personally going to try to do what he could to, to meet them, meet these people and work something out. And they did. And they got to meet with like the head, head people like Iger and Zaslav and stuff like that. And Sarantos, yep. they got the big head honchos met with them and they're like, you know, here's our deal. And from when they released it, if that's what the deal they were given and it wasn't altered for the media. That's a damn good deal. You just didn't get your your minimum writer's room. Yeah. And They're I, literally giving you whatever you want to get this thing to work out except for that one thing. And I got to wonder if guys like this aren't, aren't seeing those dollars and are like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I'm out of work. Well, this, this threat happened after that stuff came out. Yeah. And I think we're going to see more of this. We're going to see more below the line workers being like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Like, that's not enough for you? What the hell? Like, I have nothing, and you're complaining about $14,000 a week. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why the rest of America, I, thought, I think, is losing support. They're losing support, too, because you know, when they saw that, they're like, wait, wait, what? I'm you not don't like that. I'm not seeing as much. I mean, I know, like, at, at first, a lot of the pop culture websites were all like, you know, yay, strike, go on strike, guys. Yes, bitches, slay. I think well, they, what are they going to write about? Well, that's just it. What are they going to write about? But I think they were also stupidly, naively thinking that these people were getting paid as little as the bloggers well, were. I knew, but they just, but they thought it was okay. It's great. We're going we're to help them and then get this wrapped up. But it's not wrapping up. So now, no. as the, the strikes are going on and there's nothing coming out, what are they going to write about? Well, and that's that's exactly what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that the owner of these sites we talked about, we talked about Valnet a couple of days ago, CBR, they're going to look at this and be like, well, um, there's no reason keeping all these entertainment writers on because there's nothing coming out of Hollywood to, to write about. And uh, the ad rates are down and uh, AI can just generate listicles based on what's trending on Google. So bye bye. Bye bye, guys. That's yeah, it's going to be a trickle down effect. So there you go. There you go. I hope you're happy. You push for get yours, get yours, get yours. And you guys are going to be showing the door too. So what the studios need to do is come back and be like, fine, well, well you can have 10 writers in the room, but you're only getting paid a third of what we offered. I just say this is the budget for writing and you guys can figure out how to divide that mm -hmm. up amongst yourselves. Kind of like the Joker with the pool You want cube. 10 people, then you each get like a third of what you should have got yeah. if you only had the, you know, the three that were going to be here. Yeah, this is our budget for writing and we can only allot, you know, $30,000 a week or whatever. And you guys split it up however. You want 10 people in the writer's room? Fantastic. You're all getting less money though. That's mm -hmm. how it works. This is what the budget is. That's it. Yep. So, all right, we're going to wrap this up. Uh-huh. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.